Podcasting. Podcasting is a medium to communicate ideas, to inform, inspire, motivate, and connect. It's a way for you to share your thoughts and ideas with a targeted group of people. It's also a way to have fun. You know, I first heard about podcasting back in 2005. I remember I was reading an article in Popular Science Magazine, and it talked about this new rogue internet radio system akin to ham radio for the internet, where you could record your audio, share it on the World Wide Web with an RSS feed, and it would automatically download on people's overpriced hard drives called an iPod, and it could reach anyone in the world. When I really started looking into it, I realized I'd been recording podcasts since I was 11 years old. I had a friend named Adam, and he and I would sit under his bunk bed with a tape recorder and pretend like we were radio DJs. Do you remember the dictaphones that had the tape deck and a microphone attached? Yeah, that was my podcasting studio. So I've been in love with the idea of podcasting before I even knew it was a thing. And I think once you learn the why and how of podcasting, you're going to fall in love with it too. You know, as long as podcasting has been around, we're actually still early in the medium. If you look at blogs and blogging, there are over half a billion blogs out there. 500 million. And YouTube, there are more than 22 million channels out there with 10 or more subscribers. So if we look at podcasting at a mere 700,000, that's practically nothing. And if you dig into the numbers, it becomes even more interesting. 93% of podcasts launched on Anchor experience pod fade, no new episodes in the last month. And 75% of all podcasts are no longer in production. So it's likely there are only 175,000 active shows right now. That's nuts and really exciting because podcasting is just getting started and you have an opportunity to get in on at the right time. Okay, so now we see there is a major opportunity and space for us to start a podcast. So let's dig into the why. Podcasts, they capture our audience's attention. People like information that is easy to consume. If a blog post takes longer than, say, 10 minutes to read, only 3% of people will finish that post, whereas 43% of people will listen to a podcast from start to finish. People are used to having and holding conversations, and a podcast is very much like a conversation that you're listening in on. They create a personalized experience. Podcasts are great because your audience gets the chance to hear the sound of your voice and understand your thinking patterns. With text, people can't decipher your emotion and some elements like your tone, sarcasm, etc. can be lost. However, when people hear your voice, much more becomes apparent. Your tone, sarcasm, humor, and wit. Podcasts help you establish an emotional connection with your target audience. I mean, think about it. Most people listen to podcasts while they're at the gym or doing dishes, and you have a chance to be extremely close to them. You're in their ears. They help you build and maintain important network connections. Inviting guest speakers on your show is a great way to expose your audience to different industry experts, as well as you getting to build a relationship with somebody who maybe you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Podcasts open up new financial possibilities. You know, in a recent case study, real estate agent turned entrepreneur John Lee Dumas was able to grow the income from his podcast, Entrepreneur on Fire, to $46,000 a month. There are a few different ways you can earn money through podcasts. Sponsors, run ads, direct listeners uh, to services or products. Now, it's not the most common way to make an income, but it's, it's there. Podcasts allow you to position yourself as a leader in your industry. If you're able to garner enough listeners and network connections, you'll be seen as an expert in your industry. So look, there are so many reasons why you should take the plunge and create a podcast. Podcasts help you get your ideas out to the world in a new way that people enjoy. You're able to hold your audience's attention for longer periods of time, create a personalized experience, build valuable network connections, and finally, it positions you as an expert in your niche so that new listeners can look to you for insight and ideas. All right, so 
Now that we've covered the why, let's talk about the how. The first thing we need to do is come up with a show idea. And in order to do that, I usually ask people these questions. How do you currently make a living? What do you do even though you don't get paid? What communities do you belong to? What do you do better than anyone else? If you're currently getting paid for your time and expertise, that's a good sign that you have something interesting to say on the topic. Now, if you can't come up with an idea after asking yourself those questions and prefer to write blog posts or Facebook diatribes, you can always repurpose that content and read it on a mic. You'd be surprised how entertaining it is to have someone read you the news headlines instead of just reading them. Okay, so we've come up with our show idea and it's time to start recording. So we're gonna need some gear. This is one of my favorite parts. As a self-described gearhead, I'm constantly trying out new tech and reviewing the next big thing uh, because it helps myself and my audience. So the first thing we're going to need is a mic. Now, most of you won't be recording in a studio or a sound-treated room, so I'm going to recommend a dynamic microphone and suggest you stay away from condenser microphones, such as the Blue Yeti. It may look cool, but for podcasting, it's not great. The reason being that a condenser microphone, as the Yeti, is very sensitive and picks up all sorts of sounds. So if you're in a very noisy building or a room that you can hear an echo in, it will pick up all that sound in your recording and it will become audibly fatiguing for your listeners. First, let's talk about USB microphones, which means you can plug them into your computer directly and you don't need a USB interface to get them to work. These mics are very affordable and work considerably well. The first one I'm gonna recommend is the Audio-Technica ATR2100 USB mic. It's only 65 bucks and it sounds pretty decent. The Rode Podcaster USB microphone at 228 bucks is a solid option if you're not going to use the mic in any other way as it is USB only. And my final selection for USB mics is the Shure MV7 Podcast mic. It's 250 bucks. If you wanna know more about that mic, head over to our YouTube channel, Brand Viva, and I do a little review on that mic. Now, say you wanna go pro out of the gate and your budget allows for a high-end broadcast mic like the Electrovoice RE20, which is standard in radio studios across the world, or my personal favorite, the SM7B, which has a rich, deep tone. It rejects plosives and it has an amazing proximity effect, which allows the listener to feel like you're just right there with them. Then you're gonna need a USB audio interface in order to get that mic into your computer. The first USB audio interface I'm gonna recommend is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. It's 160 bucks and is used by thousands of podcasters around the world and is probably one of the most popular USB interfaces there is. The other one I'd like to recommend is my favorite USB audio interface, the SSL 2x2 at 229 bucks. It has a great tone to it and just levels up the sound just a little bit more than that Scarlett does. Now, if all this is too much and you wanna hit the ground running this very second, you'd be surprised you could actually use your iPhone or mobile device to record some audio. The other thing you could do is buy a handheld recorder like a Zoom H5, which is a four track portable recorder, and it's pretty affordable. That has a decent mic on it as well. So there's a lot of different ways that you can capture your audio. You have USB mics, you have XLR mics, and you have something as simple as your iPhone. And then if you want the all-in-one, fully integrated podcast studio, I would go for the Rodecaster Pro. Now, it's a little spendy at 600 bucks, but if your budget allows, it's what I use and what I get everyone I work with to set up on, as it's absolutely the best. It cuts down on all the issues that you have with trying to record audio calls with guests. It allows you to plug in four microphones. It has four headphone outputs. It has sound pads for you to record your intro and outro on, uh, and, and a bunch of other features. So if you have the budget, I would get a broadcast mic and the Rodecaster Pro, and you will be ready to record. Now that you have your microphone and you can plug it into your computer, you'll use audio editing software to record and edit your first episode. 
Now, if you're on a Mac, you can use the built-in audio recording program called GarageBand, or use the ultimate podcast bundle from one of my favorite Mac-only software companies called Rogue Amoeba. If you're on a PC, there's a great free software that is widely used called Audacity. Once you've recorded and created your audio file, it's time to upload it to a hosting provider and generate your podcast feed, otherwise known as an RSS feed. There are a lot of platforms out there with tons of great features, but my go-to and absolute favorite is the guys over at Transistor.fm. They provide a website for your podcast, a place to store your MP3 files, an iTunes-ready RSS feed, as well as detailed analytics. And recently, they have made it a one-click step to post your show to all major platforms like iTunes, Spotify, and the like. If you're curious on how this works, here's a great little graphic from Transistor. You as the creator upload your audio file to your hosting platform, in this case, Transistor. They then create your RSS feed and syndicate it to all the major platforms. It's that simple. See, and you thought it was going to be scary. All right, the foundations have been set. You have your show idea, you have recording equipment, you've uploaded your first episodes, you've submitted your RSS feed to various players. Now, you'll want listeners. So according to Edison Research, here are the top three ways listeners find podcasts. One, they search the internet. Two, social media posts. And three, recommendations from friends and family. So to succeed with podcast promotion, you want to target those channels. Marketing a podcast is a big topic, but here are some quick tips. One is you wanna build anticipation. Before you launch, one big opportunity many people miss is building anticipation. Create a coming soon web page for your show or get people to sign up for a waiting list. You could send out teasers and samples of the show and create momentum for your official launch day. Two, you could use keywords to your advantage. When people look for best podcasts about farming, they search best farming podcasts. If your podcast is called the farming podcast, you're more likely to get found, as opposed to calling your show mm, Steve Smith, the modern agrarian. Number three, use a newsletter. If you have an emailing list or a audience that you're already communicating with, blast it out to them and tell them you're starting your show. And then four, you could also cross promote your show on similar podcasts. Find influential shows that have a similar audience to you. Reach out and ask if they'd be interested in some sort of cross-promotion. Sometimes this means doing an episode exchange. You post one of their sample episodes in your feed and they post one of their sample episodes in your feed. Engage in online communities where your audience hangs out. Now, don't spam, but if you're communicating in a Facebook group or on an online forum, you could share an episode of your show. Create a video teaser. Create a teaser from your latest episode using Headliner and post it to Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and YouTube. Go to events, spread the word in person. Go to trade shows, conferences, and meetups that relate to your audience. People will ask you, so what do you do? And that's a great opportunity for you to say, I'm a podcaster, and this is my show. At the end of the day, it's important for you to start to be consistent with recording episodes and get your message out there because no one can be you. Thanks so much for being a part of this webinar. I hope it was beneficial. I hope it helped you out and uh, got you excited and motivated to take the next steps into podcasting. If you have any questions or need additional help, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at Brand Viva.